Hi, my name's Matt. I'm a student paramedic. Um, today we'll be demonstrating a respiratory assessment on my friend Justin over here. Um, parts of this assessment can be taken out and adapted um, to suit a pre-hospital environment and pre-hospital assessment. Um, however, it's not recommended that such a time-consuming and um, comprehensive assessment is uh, used on time-critical patients. Right, Justin, I'll get you to, to, to confirm your name and date of birth for me, please. Justin Lowe, 5th of May, 1997. Awesome, okay. And um, do you have any pain anywhere? No. No? Um, what we'll be doing today is we'll be having it, we'll, I'll have a general in inspection of your, your head, your neck, your chest, your back, and your hands. Yep. After that, we'll um, go deeper into, uh, I'll pat your chest, feel for equal chest rise, stuff like that, listen to your lungs with my stethoscope, and um, do a bit of percussion with my fingers. How does that sound? Is that all right? Yeah, that's cool. Yep. Okay, so we'll get you to sit back against the, the couch here. Um, on the ambulance, it's obviously obviously a lot easier to position our patient at a 45 degree angle, but um, this is alright. We'll get you to take your shirt off, Justin. Alright, so before I start my assessment, um, I'm just going to have a quick check of my environment, have a little look around just to get a little insight into what I'm dealing with. So what I'm looking for is um, inhalers, any medications, that are lying around, um, oxygen bottles, it's often, often a good indication of um, a, a respiratory condition that someone might be in. Um, you're not an asthmatic? No. You don't have any respiratory issues that you know of? No. No? And you're not on any medications? No. no? Alright, awesome. Okay, so, um, also looking at my patient, he looks quite well perfused, which is good. More importantly, we're looking at his um, work of breathing. Um, he isn't in any obvious respiratory distress, he's not struggling to breathe, there's no... Um, Accessory muscle use that we can that we can see, um, no no indrawing, no nasal flaring, and he's not in, in a tripod position. So so his respiratory system is working quite well. He's he's, he's doing fine. Um, all right, Justin, we'll we'll start start our assessment. Um, we'll get you to put your hands out for me like this. So I'm just feeling his hands. They're nice and warm, which means which means and, and they're nice and um, pink. Nice it means they're nice and well perfused. He's got peripheral uh, good peripheral perfusion. I'm also looking at his um, capillary refill, it should be under two seconds, which is great. Um, his fingernails and underneath his hands, and there's no yellow staining that I can see, so I'm not suspecting that he's a smoker. You're not a smoker, are you, no. Justin? Yep. Alright. Um, I'll get you to hold your hands out straight for me. Yep. So, what I'm looking for now, his hands are nice and stable, what I'm looking for is a tremor or, or a shake. Um, what that can indicate is um, beta 2 agonist use, and since we know he's not an asthmatic, I'm not, I'm not assuming that he's on any any um, salbutamol or anything like that recently. So the next thing that you do is put your hands back as far as you can. Yep. So if a patient was not able, what, what I'm looking for is asterixis, is when a patient cannot put their hands fully back. And what this indicates is CO2 retention. Good work, Justin. Um, have a look at your, your face now. I'll get you to pull your, your lower eyelids down. For me, yep. So looking at the colour of his lower eye eyelids, they're nice and pink. Um, what I'm looking for, you can stop Justin, I'm looking for conjunctival pallor, which is when your in inner eyelids are quite white and pale. And all this indicates is, and it's a good indication of anemia. So I'll get you to open your mouth up for me, oh, nice and wide. Right. So what I'm looking for is central cyanosis. His tongue and lips are nice and pink, they're well perfused. And also looking at his um, level of hydration, making sure his tongue isn't dry and stuff like that. Um, Alright, so so the next thing we can give you to do is have a look up to the roof this way. Yep. And this way. Alright, so we're looking for jugular venous distension, or JVD. Um, um, this can indicate um, a tamponade or even a tension in the thorax. And it also gives me a good idea of how much oxygen is getting to the brain. Um, I'll test for hepatojugular reflux. I'm just going to place my hand on his liver and check for JVD. Yep, so that's good. There's no hepatojugular reflux. Um, right, Justin, I'm going to have a feel of your trachea. Make sure that's nice and aligned. Yep, all right, so look up for me. Yep, so his trachea is nice and symmetrical. It's in line. His um, cricosternal distance is around three fingers, which is normal. Normal should be three to four fingers. Depending on your patient, obviously. Uh, is it alright if I feel for your pulse and, and, you, yeah. and you, you, your lymph nodes? Yep. So just feeling for his carotid pulse. 
nice and strong and regular. And feel for any swollen, just tell me if this hurts. Does this hurt at all? No. I'm just feeling for any swollen lymph nodes. Alright, that's, that's good. I can move on to the next one. Put your hands on your hips and put your, foot, your shoulders forwards. What I'm looking for now is any um, chest wall deformity. Could um, indicate trauma, um, lung collapse, anything like that. Um, flail chest even. Here to stand, sit back. I'm also looking for any scars um, that could indicate surgery. Have you had any surgery? No? Right. Um, okay, that's, that's great. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my hands on, my chest, on your chest and I'm going to feel your, feel your chest rise and just stuff like that. Is that alright with you? Yep, that's cool. Yep. Alright. So when, when I, I'll get you to breathe in nice and deeply for me. Yep. So I'm making sure that my hands rise equally and breathe out and fall equally. Um, in. And out. Yep. Alright, so um, I was looking at the symmetry that my thumbs were rising and falling. Um, making sure that it was um, equal, nice, good bilateral expansion. Unilateral expansion could indicate a lung collapse, whereas um, a reduction in bilateral expansion could um, indicate um, COPD, con chronic obstructive respiratory or oh, pulmonary disorder disease, or even a pulmonary fibrosis. Um, right. So I was also the other thing I was also doing when I was um, feeling his chest. Um, going up and down was um, feeling for any any lumps, any crepitus, um, any any other forms of obvious deformity, which I didn't feel, which is great. Um, what I'll do now, Justin, is I'm going to do some percussion. So I'm just going to tap my finger on your chest. Is that right? Yeah. All right. So supra clavicular, clavicular, and intraclavicular, both sides. Chest wall, axilla. Oh, that's awkward. Right. So, um, listening to that that percussion, a, a nice uh, normal resonant percussion means that his lungs are are all good. They're working well. But uh, any any dull any dull resonance could indicate. A collapse or even um, a hemothorax, any other pleural effusion like that. Um, Justin, I'm going to have a listen to your lungs now from a stethoscope if that's alright. Yep. Yep. Right, Justin, can you breathe nice and deeply in for me? Yep, and out. And then. And out. And then, and out. Oh. And, then, then, out, then, out, then, out, then. Out. In. And out. All right, Justin. What I'm, what I was listening for is equal and clear entry into all the lobes of his lungs. Um, I was also listening. Um, I can also listen to his upper airway. Can he breathe in for me? And out. And then. And out. All right. So I was also listening for wheezes. Any crackles that could indicate fluid build up in his lungs. Um, Wheeze is obviously um, airway constriction, um, stuff like asthma, stuff like that. Not, not. There's nothing like that. Also, listening for any congestion in his lungs, mucus plugging. Justin, I'll do the same thing again each time I put the stethoscope, the stethoscope on your chest. I'll hear you say 99 for me. All right. All right. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99 99 99 I'm up for me? Yep, 99 Alright, that's great um, We'll get you to um, lie down on your stomach now So I can do another similar assessment on your back If that's alright yep. We'll start
not off the stethoscope again. I get you to say 99 every time I put my stethoscope on your back, alright? Yep. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. Alright, now I'm just going to be listening to your lungs. So every time I put my stethoscope on your back, you get a nice deep breath in and a nice deep breath out. Good work. Um, I'm going to place my fingers on your back again. I'm going to do some percussion. If that's alright? Yep. So again, I was listening for um, equal ear entry in all lobes. I was listening for good resonance and um, good percussion. Justin, I'll get you to um, breathe nice deeply in for me. Looking for equal um, rise of both of my thumbs and equal fall. Feeling any deformity. Alright, good work, Justin. So you can sit up now. You can get your shirt back on. There you go. Thank you. Thanks for being so cooperative. You're welcome. Um, yeah, that's, that concludes our assessment. Um, listening to listen with what we've done is we've had a listen to his lungs, um, we've listened to the resonance, listened to the air entry, um, just we've done a really comprehensive assessment, making sure that his lungs are in good work, working order. If we had the right equipment, um, we could um, go even deeper into a respiratory assessment by taking an SpO2. Um, a chest X-ray and a peak um, flow rate. After conducting a respiratory assessment, a number of differential diagnoses are able to be ruled out. Um, by having a look at some of those differential diagnoses, they can also be um, grouped into statuses. Status one, status two, they're the more life-threatening um, conditions. Status three, status four, they're, they're more um, low acuity kind of stuff. So, status one can include anything such as a severe obstruction to the airway, um, an airway needing um, intervention um, to, to, per, to prevent that obstruction, severe strider, severe respiratory distress, um, going on to status 2, it can include moderate strider, moderate respiratory distress, um, and flailed chest. Um, status 3, uh, things like mild strider, mild respiratory distress, and then going all the way down to status 4, um, it's just the little things like um, anxiety related um, hyperventilation or, or shortness of breath, just stuff like that.